Yeah, so I'm Halsey Landon. Um, this is Hannah Bergman and Leslie Muzzy. Um, just three of the five uh, members in the Bowl Munch Machine, and the two others are not on campus this week. Um, so we have Bowl Munch Machine. We are a high quality fast service food truck serving hot sandwiches and melts. And we're the first mobile dining option in the CC area, and we will be serving breakfast and have already started serving late night food. So how many of you guys have ever had a taquito from 7 Eleven? Well, most CC students have since it's the, uh, one of the most popular late night dining options. <coughs> and it's part of a larger problem which we've identified, which is that there is no late night food options. Specifically, there are six on campus dining options um, that includes the cafeteria and some of the other coffee spots. And all, none of those serve food past midnight. Um, and that causes students to either drive to go get fast food or walk to 7 Eleven to get food like taquitos and other snacks. And then lastly, the other point we've identified is that there's no quick and easy breakfast option. So clients get along, that's a picture of the line in the morning for coffee, uh, the coffee shop. And also there's no um, dining option on campus for seniors who live off campus who walk on campus and who are not on the other. So this is where we see ourselves in the market. Um, not only um, well, is the mobile lunch machine convenient, but it adds um, additional social values. Um, it's a place where students can gather, um, we cater to events, and we also serve better food. Uh, and have healthy options. And those, as I said, are some of uh, the other um, late night competition. Um, so for, first off, we're uh, familiar with our customer base. Most of us are seniors, uh, both Hannah and I, and I've been here almost four years now, so we know people well here and they know us. And we've started selling food, I'll talk about that um, shortly. Um, our round the clock service will be serving food late, so when there's basically no other convenient option except for a walk to 7-Eleven, you know, late at night, either by yourself or driving to get fast food, uh, we'll fix that problem. And we, we have a unique sandwiches, sandwiches that can't be found anywhere else on campus. You no know, other place serves the type of melts we do. And for that matter, not even the springs, we might have a place that serves getting um, used like that. And lastly, we'll take gold card card. We take cash, we take credit card. And once we're up and running, we plan to take student uh, gold card. And on top of that, we'll have a large community focus. So, 25% of our profits uh, will be going to um, local food guys. So, for example, um, a soup kitchen that is on campus on Sunday. And as I said, it'll create sort of a, a way for students to gather um, outside of the cafeteria to eat. And lastly, it'll be student jobs. We'll hire students, it'll give students job experience, um, not only earn money, but uh, get experience to work with <coughs> basically a startup. So some of the marketing that we've already done, uh, we have a Facebook group, um, and we post there for whatever work we're, we're going out and cooking food. Uh, we post that on the group, and we have a pretty large following. Uh, we also have a Twitter account, and we will be putting up flyers, and we're in the midst of making t-shirts, which we would have hoped we would have today, um, but that was not the case. And we've also had an article in the school newspaper outlining what we've already done. Um, and so people know about us. We're, we're definitely on campus, and we hope to um, continue our marketing. Um, this is our group, as I said, Anna and Leslie, um, and Zach and, and Alex are not here this week. All of us took the you know, entrepreneurship class, fourth block with Steve, um, and another professor here. And so our sort of larger group is allowed us to tackle um, different aspects of the business, and I think it's key to starting a food truck, which requires you know, a lot of time to get going, and it requires a lot of people to get involved, so getting the word out is huge. So, what we've done so far, we've sold food to six events. Um, those have included on campus events, so the Battle of Bands, we sold food to two nights, which is a competition that they have on campus for student bands. Uh, we've been at the Red Dance, which is a fundraiser for an AIDS nonprofit, and we've also sold food at other off campus parties. And basically, what we've been doing now is we have a table that we set up, we have a cash box, and we've been going to Costco and getting food, and we basically, all food we buy, we sell, and it goes pretty quickly. Um, but due to the fact that all we have right now is a feeding machine, we don't have a, a truck, sort of a mobile, a mobile option to store food, um, it's been our, our confining factor. Um, so we're looking forward, we hope to get a cart on our truck. Um, we've identified some various options here, um, all of which are in a similar price range, and we, I think we get more of that if you'd like. Um, and we can hope to continue, continue to expand our customer base. So a lot of students already know about it, and are pretty excited about it, as as am I, um, and we hope to expand that not only in CC, but also in the Springs and also on other college campuses like UCCS. 
So what we need, we need financing to get a car or to get a truck, um, and also to purchase a gold card reader, so students can use your gold card to pay. And we are also looking for mentors and advisors who have experience in the food service business. Any questions? Any other competitors in town? Food trucks? There are um, a few food trucks. There's one, um, there's a couple that are sort of on main streets where people drive to them. Um, there's no food trucks in the area, and we've talked to um, basically all the other ones. And it's a little tough in the springs, so if you're just to start a food truck within the city, um, there's some confining factors with permits, but because we're going to be on campus and sort of in this, in this close area, um, we will sort of differentiate ourselves from them. But yes, there are a few. There is a taco truck and a hot dog truck. Just for your information, uh, some of my students at UCCS have proposed a similar idea for UCCS, but they've been, uh, uh, I guess, stonewalled is the right, and the right word for it, because we have an exclusive contract. The state has an exclusive contract with one vendor, and the contract says that only that vendor can serve food on campus. Okay. So that unless the truck is off the perimeter of the university, cannot sell food, or beverages, or anything. <laughs> right. um, so it's going to be a challenge for you to also get on UCCS campus. That may also be a problem with any campus, any other campus. I'm actually surprised Colorado College does not have a similar rule. It's, uh, it's nice that it doesn't, because it opens up avenues like this for you. Right, we can speak to that as um, we do have a contract with Bonaventi, and they have how we've kind of gone around that is by working directly with Bon Appetit because their interest is also in student safety and um, helping fulfill student needs. And so that's why by targeting the late night crowd after all of Bon Appetit's places are closed, um, is when we would be able to be on campus selling food. Probably going through Sodexo as opposed to going around them. Uh, yeah, the same with big plants. Yeah, I mean that's right. We've definitely, we've definitely talked about that. We've met with the food service here, um, and the woman who runs is awesome. She's all for it, which is something that I know, obviously, I, I, I totally, you know, your question to, you know, there's definitely barriers. We've been pretty surprised about how, um, you know, open people are here to having a food truck. Um, so if we were to get this off the ground um, with the food service, we'd be using part of their kitchen. So we have a huge part of their fridge that trains for with food handling. Um, we do health inspections with them, and they're all totally willing to do that. So we've sort of been, on a wait period right now, where we're sort of making our own food, and once we actually get the funding for this thing to really get off the ground, is when we'll go through and, and they'll train us for food handling and whatnot. Um, so that's basically up to us and the food service here. Um, and we've kind of gotten the okay from the school to work with them and figure out a way in which we don't take on district from them, which is why we're targeting late night food and then the breakfast option that's sort of both like away from away from the other. away from their operation. And did I understand it correctly? You have checked with the city and they do not require a permit? They do. That is one thing also which we need well, We need to get a permit. Um, we know that uh, we have to work with the city with it and that's going to uh, be a factor for us when we're selling late night off campus. Because a lot of the things that we intend to sell food up at are on campus. Um, so that permit will be through the school. But yes, if we're going to be off campus, we do need to get a permit. But you, you guys, um, when you went through your, your uh, the number of people you have involved in this, um, I mean, that's a big team for a small venture. Um, I mean, I, I have a couple of clients that have food trucks as a part of their restaurant enterprise. And I mean, it's like, you know, one person, they assign to running the food truck element of it, and, and then that's like a whole side business, and that's about it. Um, if you, it seems like you have, you're overwhelmed with uh, executive horsepower <laughs> uh, for a one food truck venture. Uh, well, Your Honor, we're also our employees. So, sure. uh, by having five of us, we, we're not having to work every single night. Okay. We're all in classes, we're all doing thesis work, we're doing all these other things. And so, it's not to say that we're all on the executive, like, oh, this has to be this. But yes, it's also, we're making food. We're making food. We're the ones that are selling sandwiches, right. taking shifts on the night. All right. So, so the yeah. next question is, um, since most of you are seniors, um, 
and you come up with a sustainability model. So when you graduate and maybe go stick around Tower Springs and the truck does, um, what ends up happening to the truck after all of you leave? Right. We, um, well, I'm, yeah, I'm a junior, so. Um, so you're going to get it. Yes, I'm going to juniors that we all know that have shown interest in. Um, and so by the end of the year, we're hoping to have a management team that will be able to help me um, take it over. And there's been some interest, and so we're kind of in that process right now. So it's kind of a, a way, it sounds like, if you can recruit younger students to, to turn them up in an actual business. Mm -hmm. So would yeah. that be an idea, or would you have it? Yes. hire somebody, though, maybe that would be this, you know, mm -hmm. one person that would always be there? Well, we're kind of excited about the idea of it being a way for students to get involved in a startup and kind of have an unofficial internship experience through their collegiate career. So they can join as early as they want and just kind of get what it takes to run something, what it takes to um, take on different tasks within the business and have it be something that's on campus available. They're not having to drive downtown and across town to Denver for this sort of experience and it can be something that also helps them build their community because their friends are ultimately the ones coming to buy. They're their friends and kind of creating that excitement about sticking around campus.